Welcome to the Women's Money Wisdom Podcast. I'm Melissa Joy, a certified financial planner and the founder of Pearl Planning. My goal is to help you streamline and organize your finances, navigate big money decisions with confidence, and be strategic in order to grow your wealth. As a woman, you work hard for your money, and I'm here to help you make the most of it. Now let's get into the show. Hi, Women's Money Wisdom listeners. I hope this message finds you well. Today, I wanted to give you an important announcement before we start the show, and it's a bittersweet one. My colleague, Melissa Freidenberg, has decided to open a new chapter in her career, and she has left to join a new firm, Leaving Pearl Planning. I'm sad to see her go, as we all are here at the office. Um, And we're also incredibly grateful for her contributions, especially to this podcast. Melissa helped to get the podcast off the ground, which was right at the beginning of the pandemic. And not only has she been my co-host for all these episodes, but she was also the show producer for much of the last four years. Melissa brought unique insight, expertise, a lot of authenticity, and a passion for financial literacy and podcasting to every episode. And her presence is going to be sorely missed. I just want to take a moment to express my heartfelt appreciation for all that hard work, dedication, sometimes late nights and deadlines that Melissa poured into making this podcast a valuable resource for our listeners and almost never missing a week. It was really amazing, all the things she got done. Now, you may be wondering about the future of Women's Money Wisdom Podcast, and fear not. While Melissa Freidenberg is moving on, the other Melissa, me, Melissa Joy, remains, and I am committed to delivering insightful, empowering content all about your finances. That's not going to change. We're still here, ready to continue the journey with you, our growing audience, exploring the intricate relationship between women like you and your money. I'm also excited to bring in some extra voices from around our office, additional financial planners, and eventually we may even have another co-host. So stay tuned for upcoming episodes where we'll continue those discussions, expert interviews, and practical tips that help you navigate your financial journey with confidence and clarity. We're excited about the future of the podcast, and I know as you continue to listen that you'll share our enthusiasm. Welcome back to the Women's Money Wisdom Podcast. It's Melissa Joy here today, and I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Sue is a pediatric physician and coach who guides midlife women through the maze of motherhood, marriage, and the magic of mindset shift with Soulful Medicine. Soulful Medicine is dedicated to empowering wise midlife women, or as she calls them, mamas, to break free from low vibe stress cycles and create lives of soul-filling, sustainable joy. I met Sue over um, COVID. We kind of found each other in some I can't even remember how, but like, you know, kind of some community Zooms and have followed her ever since on Instagram. Really love the voice that you have, Sue. Welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Melissa. I'm excited to serve here. Thank you. Well, it we're really in the intersection of life. I think we had we share a lot of kind of, you know, situations, I guess I would say. And so do our listeners as Mm -hmm. women who are really taking ownership of themselves and their lives and their money. And you posted something at the beginning of the year that was talking about a quiz that kind of interrelates to who you are and how you relate to money and in all sorts of parts of your life, which made me want to bring you on as a guest. (laughs) But I want to give everybody else a minute to meet you. So give us a little introduction beyond my, you know, kind of 30 second intro. (laughs) Yeah. Well, thank you, Melissa, and uh, for being here. It's such an honor to be with you and serve women. Yes. Um, So I am a pediatric physician and also a coach for midlife mamas. That's sort of my focus. It's mindset, motherhood, and marriage. So all where we are right now in the sweet spot. And I've been serving kids for, hmm, Uh, over 20 years, so two decades of helping them navigate their health and really 
<clears throat> aligning their diet with their DNA, as I say. So kids who are struggling with any sort of list of chronic problems, really helping them gear up their nutrition to better serve them and heal. And along the way, the mamas are always like, what about me, Dr. Sue? What about me, Dr. Sue? And I've, you know, tried all different things and reiterated and landed a couple of years ago, like, oh my goodness, like this, this is my second calling, like really leading women in this way to master their mindset, which is like perfect for the money world, right? It's like 80, 20. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we we so mindset. often, we don't yeah. start with mindset, but we got to get to the mindset to, to work it out everywhere mm-hmm. else. Like that's a big part of what I've learned in my financial learnings is like, it's about, about mastering your mindset and your emotions, right? And so to me, my true calling with soulful medicine and working with midlife women is that the more I help them master their mindset and their emotions, they can there and teach their children how to do the same. Because as I say, like the gun is neutral. The person who picks up the gun that's emotionally charged is the problem. Mm. Right. And so to me, it's like the ripple effect. Like I get so emotional thinking about that. Like the ripple effect is through women. Like you don't get into this physical earth without coming through a woman's body. (laughs) (laughs) I just had my 49th birthday to be completely vulnerable. And I called my mom and said, thank you for making this day possible. So yes, agree. (laughs) Yeah. And I turned 52 next week and I'm celebrating. Like, I think this is like the juice of life. I really do. I'm having so much fun. I'm a mom of three. So my kids are all teens um, in high school and college and we're having fun. You know, it's, it's a really kind of juicy part of life, especially if you learn to me to how to master your mind. Cause even all of us will like stumble, we get hicked up, we get activated by different things. But if you like fall down, it's all about like, okay, how do I stand back up and keep moving down? Whether that's for your health or your finances, you know, it all matters. Mindset. I feel like it, it, I'm thinking into my friends' text chains, or I have a few, you know, kind of trusted contact text groups with my fellow financial planning business owners. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of shift and evolution and owning who you are, or if you aren't, you know, like kind of pain and suffering when it comes to this midlife, which midlife feels a lot younger than I thought it was when I was growing up. I agree. I (laughs) I thought my dad was so old when we had our 50th birthday party for him, like surprised. (laughs) And I'm like, dude, you're old. And now I'm like, wait, I'm 52. I'm young. Yeah. There's a lot of personality behind it. Right. And really owning your authenticity, like really owning like who you are and what you bring to this world, I think is so beautiful. Well, I, we are going to share a quiz in the show notes for this episode from Dr. Sue. And I did take the quiz and I came out as a visionary mama. Of course you Um, did. I was like, of course, Melissa is a visionary. (laughs) (laughs) Shocker. Um, I am familiar with these terms uh, in all sorts of any personality assessment. It's like, this is who you are. The ideas are great. And then you need a team to support yes. you when it comes to getting things done. And I've really, you know, I had to struggle through earlier in my life and career, kind of figuring things out on my own. But sitting in the moment and place that we are, I find so many people are either seeking help with a coach, whether it's about their life, whether it's about improving their health, physical health, mental health. And certainly, you know, these are personal and private conversations I have with people about their money as well. But what is connected with all of those discussions and conversations is that for some people, you need a team and a community. You're not just on your own to figure things out. Um, How do you kind of approach that? Yeah. So I feel like, you know, so a big part of self-development, which is the world that I'm in, right, is really learning more about yourself. (laughs) The more Mm -hmm. we can learn about That's scary. (laughs) It yes, could be fine, Melissa. It's fine. yes. No, I love it too. <laughs> um, but it is like you, cause you get to be vulnerable and you get to really like hold a mirror up and like, look at yourself. But also like, I want, I'm encouraging all the women to take the quiz because 
the gift of the quiz is like you get to learn your gifts because all of us have gifts, you know, in the world. And then you also learn, get to learn your greatest challenge. So there's some patterns and there's generalizations, right? And the truth is you're more than a visionary mama, Melissa, and I'm more than an inspiration mama. My guess is that you also have a lot of detail in you because my goodness, you work with numbers all day long. (laughs) Yes. And also we're both moms. So there's a lot of giver in us, right? Like we're, so there's the visionary mama, the inspiration mama, the giver mama and the detail mama. And each of us have these gifts that we bring to the world. And once we own it, like once I realized like, wait, that's naturally who I am. Like I am the inspiration mama. I'm like the sunshine. Like one of my besties, she called me Susie Sunshine. Like that was my nickname for her. And so many times I would try to like dim the light, just dim the light. It's all like too much. Like stop being so positive. Why are you like, you know, it's all too much. But then I got to this point kind of midlife where I was like, hmm, what if I really step in and just own this? Like I am Susie Sunshine. Like that is who I am. I'm a bright light and use those gifts. And also though, and also hold up the mirror and look at as a, as an inspiration mama, one of the hardest parts is slowing down to get into Mm. the details. (laughs) And, And that's where a detail mama shines. Like a detail mama is in the, I always say the divine is in the details, right? I mean, think of all the numbers and the spreadsheets that you go through. Like you get, if you number crunch and you look at the details, you're going to find some divine gifts in there. And the detail mamas are organized. They're like the spreadsheet makers. They're like the people who organize the carpools. And you're like, thank you for organizing this carpool. <laughs> yes. Right? We need those people for sure. We need those people. And the, the hard part for the detail mama is she can get a little dry, right? Like life gets a little boring because everything's so routine and everything everything so perfectly placed, right? Mm. So it's kind of like this dynamic of how we all flow together that really works. That we're all, you know, we, we all need each other. And I just find the beauty of that um, in the personalities. And how do those personalities, have you seen any patterns when you look at your personality assessments for how people approach money? Yes. So the funny part, when I was thinking about this, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, of course there's like money personality types. So this is funny too, because you just think of people like this may not be you, but think of people that you know in your life, right? So a visionary mama, she's like, she's the Beyonce's of the world. She's like the CEO, the chief, you know, she twirl on them haters. <laughs> she's just, if there's not a path, she's going to create her path. And she's so good at making money. So She's really, really good at making money. And then the inspiration mama, well, I own that I'm really good at supporting the economy. (laughs) Otherwise known as spending money. I am like the easiest person to sell anything to because I love it. I get inspired. I see another shiny object. I'm like, I want that. I want to support this person or that entity. Like I love paying for people's services. Like, yes, please more. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So inspirational mamas generally are like the spenders of the world. And then the giver mamas, as you can imagine, they give They they share their money. They're they're like, how much do you need here? Do you need my diamond ring? Here you go. Like they're just like, here's a shirt off my back. They're always they're always willing to, you know, stretch their dollar and and find money, you know, in order to support or their time, effort and energy to support. Right. And then there's the detail mamas who are the awesome savers. May we all have a detail person in our lives to help us like save, (laughs) save our money, save. So uh, yeah, I think it's fun to think of people in your life, like maybe your, your partner or even your kids. Like you can see these trends in your kids too. Totally. It's not a familial, there's no genetics when it comes to, the personality traits typically of the next generation. And I see that from the ground up, not from a quiz, but from how I kind of uncover people's money lives in our financial planning process where, you know, everything that you just described, I'm like, oh, that's so-and-so, that's so-and-so. I am like, I can definitely tell, I will tell my clients, like my personal money strength is not to be the most specific on budget or to spend Mm -hmm. the least, I would prefer to go and make more money. If you tell me that like we don't have enough, I would totally prefer to do that. And I think, you know, in both of the ways that we're approaching things, you're honoring who you are instead of turning you into Mm. a system or process that doesn't fit. I love that. 
not everybody's the same. And of course, there are some personal finance gurus out there that just say, hey, no debt, or I will shame you if you choose to spend on this or that. But really, like, you know, the world goes round with all different types of people. And that includes the way that you approach money. You can really play to your strengths and then accommodate for areas where you may need to work on things or have weaknesses by acknowledging what the challenges are or identifying opportunities. Yeah. And hiring help. (laughs) Yes. And like also having a dialogue because you say you work on, you know, like you acknowledge that many people are in a relationship Mm -hmm. and you're working on marriage for these um, midlife mamas, Mm -hmm. you know, like if there's two of you in the room and you have two different strengths and also different weaknesses, then, you know, having someone else in the room that can be a third party to help bridge the gap. So oftentimes we work with, you know, we work with ideally both members of the household in the, in the relationship. And we're giving space for each other to have a conversation and honor each other's, you know, both concerns and strengths in a way that feels less chaotic than just, you know, when you're like, why did you just buy this? <laughs> right. This is so perfect, Melissa, because I, yeah. Well, first I always want to, I oh, so many things I want to share. The story, the story. <laughs> There's story time. Is- the, the story that comes to mind is my husband and I, okay, because this is just a fun money story. When this is what our money conversations used to be, because <laughs> I'm an inspiration mama and he's a detail dad. <laughs> like, so we're, we're kind of the polar opposites. He's a saver. I'm the spender. <laughs> it's a really great combo as long as you can acknowledge where you're coming from. Yes. So our money conversations when we first got married, 20, well, we're about to celebrate 22 years Okay. Um, uh, so our, our money conversations used to go like this. First, we try to avoid it, right? Because we, we spend, save differently, right? And then we would come, we would have when we actually finally had to have one in the beginning of our marriage, and then it would be like an explosion. And then we would like walk <laughs> off. Like it was like a duck fighting flutters and then see you later. And that, that was kind of, so was, we've had a whole evolution of that, of honoring each other's, you know, personalities, our tendencies, our strengths, the things that, you know, kind of how we, and hiring help. I can't emphasize that enough. Like hiring, hiring the coach for me, it's a lot of personal development of learning myself, who I am, where I best serve um, Mm -hmm. and playing to my strength. And, and also for our marriage, like hiring a fiduciary, like hiring someone who's like reassuring all the time, every quarter, like, nope, you're on track. It's all okay. You know what I mean? Yep. So I think that that has been super supportive in our, you know, I like to call it the abundance journey, mm-hmm. <laughs> the journey of abundance, learning your personality types. And also what I teach a lot with mamas is because I just work with the moms. Like I don't work with the other, the other partner. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, how does this work, Dr. Sue? I mean, we got to get him in the room or, you know, and I'm like, actually, we don't. Because the more you work on yourself and your relationship, the more you work on you, your relationships automatically evolve. That's why I've never read a parenting book. You know, I just keep working on myself and my my relationships with my kids keep growing. And same with my husband. So I love that too, that, you know, empowering women to know, like the more they work on themselves, you know, they automatically, the ripple effect is to those they love. Well, I find, I, I agree (coughs) when, when I hear you say hiring professionals, I think of a variety of things. Like Mm -hmm. one of the things off the bat was I found myself at a moment in time when my children were younger and I was commuting to a job where I had a good friend um, who was also a a business owner as a financial planner who was like, Melissa, like you're trying to make daycare work and you guys do not have the time for that. You need to consider a nanny Mm. or someone who is more dedicated to making this work. It was a game changer for me at a time where I just did not even think there was another pathway. I just had to, you know, like uh, grin and bear it. And that goes on along the line in my own business. I definitely have found huge value with coaches who come in and give me a third party assessment diagnostic oftentimes, or most of the time there's no surprises, but it helps me to organize. It helps me to galvanize. It helps me to take action. Mm -hmm. Um, It also helps me communicate with my team in on, in my personal life. I am a huge proponent of therapy if it makes sense for you. And Mm -hmm. working with a therapist for me has helped me to realize 
where I can control things and where I need to control my reaction and not, you know, be able to be changing yeah. things. And it just helps me to have my mature, my inner self to uh, the appropriate age for, you know, my external age as well on my own terms. Yeah. I think that that big thing, um, cause all of us like control, like we all like to have certainty in our life. Right. And it's when we of have course. uncertainty that our emotions go cray cray, you know, like <laughs> the market you, that. Oh people. yeah. Right. And, yes. and Melissa is probably telling you guys, sit on your hands. Don't do anything. Just caution to the wind. Right. Um, but yeah, just the, we all in this wanting this control and certainty in our life, we, it's funny that we focus on what we can't control. So we like, can't control the stock market. <laughs> you know, we can't control the weather, but yet so many times we're focused on these things that we can't control versus focusing on the 99% of the things that we can control. Like, what, you know, what our thoughts are, you know, yeah. the emotions that we're creating, the actions that we decide are not, you know, to take or not take. Right. And then therefore getting the results. So I feel like that's a lot of, you know, I mean, so many examples come to mind, like even coaching a mom who, you know, recently went through a divorce and anytime the email comes through, cause they're going through a financial issue right now. Right. She just gets like, you know, the word what's next. Triggered. Yeah. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. And then derailed in essence. And, and there's so many easy tricks to just interrupt that pattern. Like it's mind blowingly easy, right? Things that you can do in a nanosecond where, you're, and then you start laughing. It's like, it's, and it's based in psychology, like Pavlov's dog. I feel like everyone learned that in psych 101 somewhere. Like you just link a new reaction to that stimulus that used to make you go crazy. You just re- create like a funny thing from it. And then you start laughing. So every time the email comes in, you know, from the ex and you just want to, you know, then you're like, ah, <laughs> like it, it works. It's right. Or deep, like breathe deeply and intentionally before yeah. you react, like get that oxygen in the system. <laughs> so, so you're not hyperventilating and really compounding the issues. True. So true. And yeah. having your coach, you know, whether it's a financial professional like myself or you, being able to know you and then advise you in the context of you and who you are, not only in a money quiz, but also, you know, the real, real, um, I think can be so powerful. It's not for everyone, but for many people, it can feel like you're on a journey toward positivity, toward incremental, like change that's good. Yes. And I also agree, like I'm a big proponent of group coaching. So that's another Mm -hmm. segment of what I do. And I feel that way because women, like our natural tendency is, you know, we want to try to be like, go it alone. Like we think that like, oh, no one has this problem. I'm on my own. I can figure this out. I don't want to be a pain to anybody else. We try to just like figure it out on our own and like suffer. Where in actuality, like transformation can be fun. <laughs> we, can, we can have- fun. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more. And it can be quick and easy by learning these things, but especially learning them together. So like once a month, I get these women together together on a zoom and we have fun. Like we have fun and we learn and we focus on one thing. Like this month we're going to be focusing on connection and relationship Mm. and really, um, using some techniques about how to improve a a challenging relationship. And your relationship could be your, your relationship with money. (laughs) That could be your relationship or it could be with time or it could be with the ex, or it could be with a, a child that you're struggling with. And when we learn these really simple frameworks of, you know, see the pattern, use the pattern, create a new pattern is like an easy framework that I teach. We can move forward together. We can laugh. We can see the similarities and also be blessed by each other's differences, right? So an inspirational mama and a detailed mama and a visionary mama and a giver mama all in the same room together is just like exponentially going to create better solutions, right? So that to me is like the gold as well, like one-on-one, but also really working together as a group. It's so interesting because in modern society, we've got this loneliness. We can see everyone and what's going on when it comes to social Mm -hmm. media. And yet we don't always show what's really happening on the surface, which is sometimes appropriate, but also gives you a false sense of what everybody else's reality is. And we just sometimes lack community. So I love what you're doing is, is creating and fostering community where some people might not 
have that otherwise. They might not have new relationships because all of their time is being devoted to just making the household work and things like that. So I think there's something to be said in what both of us do to being real and finding a place you can be real Mm. and also finding a place you can be safe to talk about, you know, not only what's working, which it sounds like your work does. And I know my work does is like, Hey, here's where you're doing a great job and you might not have known it. But also like, where is it safe to say, I hate this about my life and I need to change it. Or I would Mm -hmm. like to focus and work on making, for example, this relationship better. Where's the safe space to have the support and community? And it sounds like you're creating that. Mm, it is so great. And yeah, we meet, we meet once a, and then and your quiz is the invitation in. So you get to take the oh, quiz and, nice. then, and then you'll be invited into the community. Um, but yes, yeah, so we're also just connecting outside of social media. So mm-hmm. there's an online platform that we connect in where it's safe. The whole part is like safety and security of just being authentic, being yourself and, you know, being vulnerable because vulnerability is what heals. That's the thing. Like if we all try to be these shiny, perfect objects, we just bounce off of each other. But when we're really vulnerable and open up and realize like, wow, someone else is going through this or wow, I'm not alone in this or wow, this isn't going to create disaster for my entire life forever. Or wow, I haven't totally screwed up my kids yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> all these things. It's like, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, we've done that. And then and then healing happens. And that's what I think the beauty is, is that healing happens together, not alone. Healing is a, is, is a together process. Yeah, there's something, especially in the areas that we specialize in health and wealth, that we don't have as much context for healthy conversation <laughs> that is vulnerable, that is real and authentic. And mm-hmm. um, so- you know, what we try to do with this podcast is break down some of the barriers to true communication when it comes to money and, and give you some, you know, just have a real conversation about money like you and I are doing. And the work that you're doing is that as well. So recognize if you're a listener, you are working on that muscle of communication about money and health in this episode something that we all need as a society. We need to be able to do better. You know, like it shouldn't be that you're more comfortable talking about death and taxes than how to manage your financial accounts. Mm, Yes. True. True that. And also with kids, like I'm such a big proponent, I think of just, yeah, having that conversation with kids, spend, save and share. That's like, Mm, I love it. Started the conversation and like, they were like this big spend, save and share. What do we do with our money? We spend it, we save it, we share it. Now we talk about like investing. (laughs) So they understand, starting to understand, but it's like spend, save and share and normalizing the talk of it, right? Like normalizing, talking about finances has been a huge thing and really seeing the repercussions of that and our children really respecting and honoring money. For sure. That is money. Isn't physically present in a young person's life the way it was when we were growing up. Mm-hmm. So you saw mom and dad get out the checkbook and write the check versus it's different than swiping yeah. a card and even balance the checkbook. Um, and now, you know, the wallet is all plastic. It's not the pennies and coins that you might add up to go to the grocery store and buy your pack of gum or something mm-hmm. like that. So adding in those discussions that you may take for granted and think your kid is picking up on, um, are so powerful. And then also just, you know, talking as a family, this goes, especially for those that they've kind of had an overabundant, you know, um, you know, like Mm -hmm. there's too much spending and not enough in investing or saving where you, it's really feels like you're hurting the kids, uh, because you want to give them everything in a world where it feels like everything, everyone else has so much, but it's really a gift to talk about limits, to talk about boundaries, to talk about as a family, we're focusing on this, you know, this financial aspect so we can pay for college or so we can do this or that. So some of those, like modeling some of those discussions can be extraordinarily powerful. And you may wake up one day and be like, I never had that that conversation. And now I've got a 16 year old or something. So Mm -hmm. great examples. Yeah. And really fun to see the different personalities in your kids. Like just take the quiz and then see, because like you can see even with how they you can, you're going to, you know, the, the giver is going to want to give her money away. Like just watch it. <laughs> you know, you've got the spenders, you got the savers where she earns a lot of money in our family, like the detailed mama child that I birthed, 
she makes a ton of money and she's like very detailed about how she spends it and like releasing it is like a thing. Right? <laughs> um, so it's really cool though, you know, just seeing, seeing that. And I think just knowing those a big thing about influencing children is, you know, or your partner <laughs> around anything, including money is know what already influences them. So that was another huge part of my journey, like um, in partnership with my husband was that, you know, I get to keep, you know, knowing that he's a detail person, like keep on the details, right? Like, yes, keep give him the details. This account has this much, this, you know, savings or investment account has that much, like keep them on the details. Like Here's what's going on in the care. business. Exactly. Too, because that can often times in a relationship be, you need to report on your business because in, in most families, if you're an entrepreneur, the family balance sheet is tied to the business, yes. like it or not. You know, if something, if the business is not performing well, the family will pay the price. And so you need to have some regular reporting if you're a business owner of, Hey, here's how things are going. Here's what to expect. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's very powerful, that communication muscle. It's well, been fun. it's been a fun ride. <laughs> <laughs> and it is never ending, just like financial planning and, uh, you know, like a health journey, um, mindset journey. This is a journey, not a, it's not an action that stops. Yeah, it's not a quick fix. And I say the same in the mindset, you know, marriage, motherhood world, right? The hardest thing I always say with parenting is like patience, persistence, patience, persistence, patience, persistence. Same thing with finances. Mm. It's like, you just do a little every day and you're consistent with it. And it's the same. It's not, it's not like I've discovered some way to um, make emotional and mental mastery easier. I just think of, we've made it more fun with a quick, easy tool belt for moms. I love it. Well, we will make sure to link to show notes, but just can you mention where to find you on social media and or websites? Yes. So I'm at drsuemacready.com. And then for my pediatric practice, it's pediatricholisticmed.com. All my social media handles are at Dr. Sue McCready. And then the fun quiz we'll put in the show notes, um, but it's also, you can find it at soulfulmedicinequiz.com. Love it. Thank you so much for joining us, Sue. And here's to that mindset journey. Listeners, let us know how it's going. (laughs) Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Women's Money Wisdom Podcast. If you found value in this episode, The best way you can support the podcast is to forward an episode to a friend or leave a review. Go to pearlplan.com and the podcast link to get all the resources and links mentioned.